So a midterm election is just when we vote halfway through to see if they keep going, right? Well, I think it's a pretty good idea. Fine, let's explain what midterms actually are. Hi internets, I'm Ross. This is the Talk Better Project. You know, they're still nine months away, but I'm willing to bet that you're already hearing about midterm elections. We sure do talk about those a lot, so let's define that real quick. A term is how long any person who's been elected to office holds the position they were elected to. So a midterm actually refers to any election that takes place midway through a different office's term. Here in the US, it usually refers to one specific election. See, our president holds office for four years. The elections that happen to take place two years after the president has already taken office are usually what we're talking about when we talk about midterm elections. And who's getting voted on? Lawmakers. At the federal level, the lawmaking branch, or legislative, is called Congress as a whole. Congress has two separate bodies, the House of Representatives with 435 members and the Senate with 100. All 435 representatives have a two-year term and they're all elected at the same time, November 6th of even-numbered years. Senators have a six-year term, but all 100 are split into three groups and have their terms spaced so that one-third of the Senate gets voted on every two years. So we're voting on one-third of the Senate and all of the House of Representatives every two years. It's just when the timing is right and it falls two years after the president has taken office that we call it a midterm. And when they happen, we talk about them a lot. Sometimes nine months beforehand. We talk about them, though, because they're important. I mean, imagine working in a 435-person office, and every two years, everything stops, old, familiar, and experienced faces leave, new faces come on board, and everything just restarts. The house completely recreates itself after every election, so any bills that had been being worked on die. Committee work gets shelved and put aside, new members have to learn the ropes, and this isn't just some office. These are the lawmakers of the country. So that's reason number one, that midterms are very important. Reason number two is that midterms are often seen as sort of a poll on the president. The president has had about a year in office by the time midterm campaigning really begins. And what do people think of when they think of politicians? The president. So taken on a whole, midterms are often seen as sort of a way for voters to send a message. Reason number three is that historically speaking, elections for Congress don't really change a whole lot very quickly. See, when someone is running for an office that they already hold, they're called an incumbent. And in the House of Representatives, 90% of incumbents win re-election when they run. But during midterms, that number can change a lot. In 1994, both houses, the Senate and the House of Representatives, changed parties. 2006, both changed parties. In 2010, the House of Representatives changed parties. So when midterms come around, historically speaking, people tend to expect something to change. So there you have midterms. Kind of bonkers, huh? I mean, they're confusing, they're chaotic, they slow down governing. You know who we have to blame for it? Republicans. Nah, just kidding. <laughs> It's actually the Democrats. Still kidding. But you did want to believe me for a second, didn't you? It's actually the Constitution. The House of Representatives shall be composed of members chosen every second year by the people of the several states. The founders wanted representatives to be in touch with their voters. Now remember, this is before planes and cars and internet. So they wanted to force them to come home every two years to run for re-election. Now senators, they realized, would probably be a little bit further removed, but that's okay. Senators are meant to represent the states. Representatives are meant to represent voters. Representatives ought to return home and mix with the people. By remaining at the seat of government, they would acquire the habits of the place, which might differ from those of their constituents. It seems proper that the representative should be in office time enough to acquire that information which is necessary to form a right judgment, but that the time should not be so long as to remove from his mind the powerful check upon his conduct that arises from the frequency of elections, whereby the people are enabled to remove an unfaithful representative or continue a faithful one. And you know what? I think it worked pretty well, huh? I mean, you know what your representative is like, right? They're voting, how you want them to vote. You know what their name is, or, or what district you're in. I mean, you definitely voted in the last midterm elections. 
right? Thank you very much for watching. This is the Talk Better Project. It's a video series about disagreeing with one another, but doing it well. If you liked it, I hope that you'll share the video. If you really liked it, I hope you'll consider going over to patreon.com slash talkbetterproject and joining the growing group of people who are helping me make it. Thanks. See you around. Now that we've covered what exactly midterms are, we're going to talk a little bit about how they affected the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act. They're still of the House of Representatives, uh, House of Representatives, get a muffler. And when a midterm election, God, I hate this intersection. People tend to see as no opportunity. Send a message to the What district? Well, how are there? Is that like one guy who had? <laughs>